Okay, so the last part of this section, um, we're going to talk about congenital heart defects. So, good. It's uh, the same PowerPoint as the um, last couple sections. So we're going to start on page 24 in this PowerPoint. So I'm trying to um, divide the PowerPoints up into shorter lectures, so you're um, hopefully 20 minutes or less. <laughs> So they're easier to digest. <laughs> there are a lot, there's a lot of information in this chapter, and we're doing it over two weeks, but hopefully with the lectures in the small chunks, it'll be a little bit easier. So congenital heart defects are cardiac anomalies, um, meaning abnormalities, that um, are structural defects in the heart that develop during the first eight weeks of embryonic life. So that's when organogenesis is happening, um, so things can happen then that um, can then continue on until the baby's born. So congenital um, heart disease can include valvular defects, septal defects, so the septum is the division between the um, two sides of the heart. Um, sometimes they are detected by the presence of heart murmurs. Um, some of them, if untreated, the child may develop heart failure. So we talked about childhood congestive heart failure in the last section. And so sometimes congenital heart defects can cause that. So um, the child might be cyanotic or acyanotic, depending on the direction of the blood is being shunted. So cyanotic, they have a blue tinge to them. Their lips or nail beds might be blue or the insides of their um, mucous membranes. So um, if a child is blue, this isn't a good thing. Um, so that's something that they check when a baby's first born. They look at its APGAR signs, and the first, the A in APGAR is appearance. And they're looking, does the baby have a normal um, coloration, or are they cyanotic? But you can still have a heart defect um, and, and not be cyanotic. So large defects, there can be, you can have small or large defects. With large defects, um, they tend to be pale, have pallor, um, tachycardia, high heart rate. Um, they often have a very rapid sleeping pulse and um, frequent pulse deficit. So um, dyspnea on exertion, so they have difficulty breathing when they're um, exertion. Um, sometimes children, toddlers and older children will assume a squatting position. Um, and a lot of times children naturally find a position of less discomfort. Um, so when they squat, they, it appears to modify the blood flow and make them more comfortable, um, which is interesting. Sometimes they'll have clubbed fingers and that's edema. Um, intolerance for exercise or exposure to cold weather, they'll get dyspnea um, with that. And delayed growth and development is often a sign or symptom of a large defect. Um, severe defects are often diagnosed at birth um, because it's noticeable. Like I was saying, with, when they're checking the baby's APGAR signs right immediately as soon as they're born, um, they might be cyanotic, and that's usually caused by a severe defect, and it's diagnosed right away. Um, others might not be detected for some time. There might be, you might have a, um, a murmur or a valvular deficiency that is not major but it starts to show up over time. So they're going to use um, radiography. Again, they're looking for um, cardiomegaly, in, enlarged heart, or other um, defects that they can see in a radiograph. Um, diagnostic imaging, um, ultrasound, and some of the other diagnostic imaging. Cardiac catheterization can sometimes be used to correct defects. Um, echocardiography, that's, they're looking at the blood flow, and electrocardiography, they're looking for dysrhythmias, and surgical repairs. Um, so some of the um, severe defects that are diagnosed at birth can be surgically repaired, and that um, child can then go on to lead a normal life, which is great. That's a good outcome for that. So with val a ventricular septal defect, it is the most common congenital heart defect, and there's an opening in the interventricular septum. Um, so it can vary in size and location. So when it's untreated, there's usually higher pressure in the left ventricle because it shunts, so it shunts from left to right. Um, so 
they don't get cyanotic because they're getting oxygen um, from the pulmonary system going into the left, but then some of that oxygenated blood, oxygenated blood is going back into the left ventricle. So um, unless there's, um, usually it's acyanotic unless they have a respiratory condition along with it, but it increases pressure in the right ventricle. So <coughs> often it involves both surgical and medical procedures. Um, open heart surgery to correct that opening, a catheter procedure, sometimes if it's small enough they can correct it that way, or a hybrid procedure where they do both. Um, the medical treatment is used to increase the strength of contractions, decrease the amount of fluid in circulation, and to keep a regular heartbeat. For valvular defects, um, they usually affect aortic and pulmonary valves, so they're the ones that are going out of the ventricles. Um, they might be classified as stenosis or valvular incompetence, which is failure of the valve to close completely. So when the valve doesn't close completely, the blood uh, regurgitates or it leaks backwards. With mitral valve prolapse, um, it, there are abnormally enlarged and floppy valve leaflets so the, the valve can't close completely. Um, they can be replaced surgically either with a mechanical or animal tissue. So they use um, pig heart valves to replace um, those mitral valves, which is pretty interesting. And I have worked with, um, pediatrics is not my specialty, as I think most of you know, so I have not worked with a lot of children, but I have worked with adults with um, valve replacements and they usually do quite well and children do well too because children heal better. So um, there's the this um, diagram from the book which is on page 250 which talks about the um, effects of heart valve defects and um, basically with heart valve defects you get um, ventricular hypertrophy and incomplete atrial emptying is kind of the upshot of it all, but you can look at those. So these are the um, valve replacements, which I think are pretty neat. The one, um, let's see, the one on the right, I think, is the um, porcine valve, and the other one is the mechanical valve, but um, kind of neat that they could do that. So um, the tetralogy of phallet, it's the most common cyanotic heart condition. So in the um, the ventricular septum, we had a left to right shunt, so it wasn't causing cyanosis. When we have a right to left shunt, we know that it's the less oxygenated blood in the right side before it goes to the lungs. And um, so when it's shunting from right to left, you get cyanosis because you're getting um, deprivation of oxygen. The shunt bypasses the pulmonary circulation and it alters pressures in the heart and alters the blood flow. So um, it usually in, um, includes four abnormalities um, involving the heart as well as the joints. That's why they call it the tetralogy. Um, tetra is four, tetralogy. Um, heart and joint abnormalities, the um, ventricular septum, problem. Um, Dexter position of the aorta, so the aorta instead of being on the left, it's on the right. Um, and right ventricular hypertrophy. So those are the four components of the tetralogy of phallet. So it's probably pronounced fellow um, because I think it was a French cardiologist who originally characterized it, but I hear people say it both ways. Um, so this is the uh, diagram from the book that shows different defects and you know whether or not you're getting whether the shunt is right to left or left to right determines whether you're going to um, result in uh, cyanosis so this is that same um, from that same diagram so you can take a look at those and see if um, they make sense to you so um, with small defects they're often um, asymptomatic other than the presence of a heart murmur and a lot of times that is not 
detected until later in life. So a lot of people can go um, throughout their whole life and not know that they have a um, congenital heart defect until later on when um, somebody's auscultating their heart and they notice a heart murmur. Um, so it can be very um, asymptomatic and n not serious if it's a very small defect. Um, I worked with a guy several years ago who had um, a, um, an atrial septum problem congenitally, which he didn't know about until he was an adult. And the result of that atrial septum problem was he had migraines. And um, so he, he went in to get tested for his migraines and they found that problem. So he had his choice. He could either have heart surgery or um, he could take migraine medications, which were very effective for him, and he chose to take migraine medications. So um, sometimes smaller defects, they, they might have an effect like that, but they might not always be something that um, the doctors are going to jump right in and fix. Because if the person got to their um, adult age with this small defect, they're probably going to do okay with it, hopefully.